Hi, my name is Dale Johnson, and I like to make things. And today we're going to draw Mickey Mouse. And if you're watching this, why don't you go ahead and grab some pencil and a paper and draw with me. Or you can just wait until after I'm done and after you've seen everything and then you can draw yours. Or you can draw with me. It's up to you. Now, as you'll notice, I have my little thumbnail up here again. I've actually labeled it thumbnail so that I'll remember that it's a thumbnail and not draw over the thumbnail by accident and mess up all my layers again. And I've got them in kind of a running pose. You can have them however you want. Hold on, hold on. Which leg is in front of the other? See, I want to put his hands in first. He's going to be waving to us. It's a horrible hand, but it's a sketch. I'll fix it in a minute. And since his hand, this side is back, and that one would be forward. And this is going to be kind of a weird Mickey Mouse, I think. Go ahead and size this sketch up so that it'll fill up the whole thing. Whoop, got to make room for his ears. Of course, this being Mickey Mouse, he has these bowling ball ears on his head. And they're always, in 2D, they're always on the same side like this. I mean, when you look at them from the front, they're always up there on the side. Even when, I mean, you would think, when he turns his head, you would think that they would be, oops, this up here, kind of like this, at an angle. But no, they're always like this. Now, when they do it in 3D, sometimes they'll do it like that. But in 2D, it's always like this. And apparently, as the Disney animators got better after they got out of the 30s and 40s, that kind of bothered them a little bit, and they wanted to do more realistic mice. But we all kind of like Mickey Mouse. And this being my third Let's Draw, I thought I'd do something a little different. So that's why we're doing Mickey here. I've got a lot of Mickey Mouse reference in the other... My other monitor, you can't see them. I'm gonna do kind of a newer. Whoops, his eyes are. Mickey's eyes are really close together. I'm doing kind of the newer one where he has whites in his eye. I can never quite figure out how they draw his nose. Because sometimes it'll be sticking out more like this. I think there's specific rules for how they do it. And it's gonna depend on the animator. Like I said, I'm doing the newer Mickey Mouse, so he's got the whites in his eyes and everything. It's a little simplistic, I think I'll... Now, if I can get this done quickly enough, I might even color it so you can kind of get a feel for how I color things. You gotta remember, Mickey Mouse only has three fingers. Which is kind of weird, but maybe that's how they do it. And of course, I have these Let's Draws so that I can talk a little bit about what I've done working on my game Junks today. If you don't know what Junction is, go ahead and go to my Vision Riders channel and I've got a video on there showing the gameplay preview. It's a point-and-click adventure game. Pretty standard, but it's got a few unique things about it. And I'd suggest you go check it out real quick if you haven't already. Either before or after you finish watching this, it doesn't really matter. As long as you watch it, I'll be happy. And just like last week, mostly it's been backgrounds. Lots and lots of backgrounds. Finished out, I talked a little bit last week, I only got really one done. Finished out that one, had a, not, none of them are completely finished. Go ahead and put up the ones that I've got done this week. Just look through them real quick. If you want, you can pause the video and get a closer look. But that's pretty much what I've been doing. So, like I said, they've still got a ways to go, but they're mostly finished. And I started work on a fourth one this week. Did not finish it out, though. So 
don't think I'll finish it. I've got other stuff I gotta do this week. This running pose doesn't look right to me. Like I've pointed out to other people. I've only got so much time to do these, so I can't always make them look quite the way I want them to. His eyes are still too far apart. That's a little better. Not great, but better. Ish. Of course, I'll probably look. After I do, sometimes I'll probably look at the video and think, ah, oh, it's not so great. As far as Junction goes, going back to that subject. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to do more than backgrounds. It's kind of a bad time to start doing these because all I'm doing is those backgrounds. We'll go. You see over here, I've already set up my layers. I'm going to go ahead and go to the in this, go ahead down to the final sketch layer. Let's clean that up a bit. As I was saying, I'm not sure this was the best time to start doing these because I'm really just doing backgrounds right now. Lots and lots of backgrounds, but they gotta be done. It's an adventure game, a lot of the gameplay has to do with searching through the backgrounds and looking at stuff. So if they don't look good and they're not finished, I hard to go on and do other stuff. I've already done a lot of the other stuff I can do. His nose here. See, I'm only six minutes into this. I might actually be able to color this. Won't necessarily... You know what? Let's flip him around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna flip the whole canvas. Canvas horizontal. And you know what? I've already messed up. I forgot to turn... When I do a really rough sketch like this, if you... Look closely at my brush here. Notice I've got the opacity on with the thickness of the line. Whoa. Move that by accident. And I do that just so that it looks more like a sketch and it's easier to go over and I can push harder to make a darker look. Turn my shape dynamics back on. I'll regret that in a little bit when I run out of room. Or time, rather. Let's see if I make sure I get his mouth right. I've got an enormous forehead. People have pointed out that I draw big foreheads. It's partially on, partially on purpose, because I like kind of the childish quality it gives to characters, even when I'm drawing adults. I usually pair that with smaller eyes. There's a couple different artists that do the kind of same thing. Most of them to better effect. But when I'm doing these let's draws, I'm usually trying to work really quick. And so a lot of times it kind of looks strange when I do it. Let's see, how did how did they draw Mickey Mouse's fist? They're just I don't know, I don't really have one where he's got a yeah, he's kinda got a fish in it. Fist and that. It's just going to be how I draw fists. Which is to say, it's different every time I do it. I really need to remember to talk louder and stop muttering. It really hurt, makes it hard to hear when you go to the final. When I take the sound, the sound out and everything, make it sound right. And that makes any sense. Of course, he's product of the 40s and 30s. He's got that very belly bean, to jelly bean type body. I remember to put his tail in, which he doesn't always seem to have. Whatever. And then he's got the little buttons, which doesn't make sense because they're not overalls. Because he doesn't wear them like that, which I always think he does, but he doesn't. He's well, I keep undoing stuff I don't mean to undo. He's also got these noodly legs. That the characters at that time always had. Olive oil is probably the weirdest example of that from Popeye. And his shoes do not have a lot of definition in them. Woo. 
Now you'll notice last week I started putting down here started putting the names and everything of all the names and everything of all the tracks of the music I've put in. And it make, made it kind of look egotistical because they were all done by me and I always listed my main name. The reason I did that is because I'd planned and still kind of do to include other people's musics in yeah, yeah, musics, music in here. And that'd be kind of neat if you've got something that you want to include. I'll put a link to your site and everything, your SoundCloud or whatever. Let's not have the dry sand. Put a link to your, your site or whatever and I'll credit you. I'm not quite sure that I'll do that, so uh, for this week I'm taking all my names out. My names, my name out, so that it look, doesn't look too much like I'm trying to build myself up. A lot of it's just old projects that never finished or just tests and stuff that I've got lying around. You have the little thing on the back, yep. It's got these little glove marks. Did I do that right? Yep, only three fingers. Take his forehead in a little bit. Apparently, early on, what some of the animators did, they just put little quarters down whenever they needed to draw his ears so that they'd be perfectly round. Of course, then you have a problem. His head's always got to be the right size to do the quarters. Not the best solution to that. Well, he's off model, but then most of the stuff I draw is. But he looks like Mickey Mouse mostly. Just flip him around, make sure he looks mostly okay. zoom out so we can see what we're doing. Turn off the original sketch. His nose is off. And some of these got kind of this weird nose that sticks out like this. Which I think is a little close to how he's usually drawn. His style has changed depending on what they've used him for. Of course, the most noticeable is when they changed the way they did his eyes for Fantasia. And that actually helps him, mostly. But I can't sit here and nitpick all day, so. Well, I can, but then that won't be very interesting. I won't get anywhere. So let's go ahead and go on to the final inking layer. And for this, I want to turn off shape dynamic and just... Whoa! I want to turn off other dynamics and just have shape dynamics. And in here, I'm not going to do it as carefully as I usually do it. I just don't have the time. But here I'm going to be... Ooh, come on. Take the opacity down. Here I'm way more careful about how I go about my lines. And I'm drawing on the wrong layer, as usual. And I thought I turned you off. I bet I turned it off on the eraser. Whatever. And... Like I said, I'm not being nearly as careful as I really should be, because I've only got so much time. I try to use as few lines as possible. And when I say lines, I'm not saying number of lines. I'm saying, instead of doing this, Try to make it one as one big a fluid motion as I can. Having this small Wacom tablet does that hard because, as I've noted, noted before in one of my other Let's Draws, it doesn't handle the curves very well when I need it to. How are we doing on time? We're only 15 minutes in. We got plenty of time. I'm going to be able to cover this, I think.
And you'll notice I'm not particularly careful about closing lines. Okay. Generally try to because it looks better when you do. But I don't get carried away with it. Of course, the side effect of that is I can't just go magic wand and drop color in all the time. So that would bother some people, but that's how I do it. Don't use the color dro not the color dropper. I don't use the magic wand for coloring, at least not that much. This is by far not the best inking I've ever done. Let's see if I can get this curve in his mouth right. A little better than I did right here. And last week I said I was planning to go watch The Croods, it's DreamWorks' newest picture, and I did. Didn't do it on Friday, got to do it on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. And the size came out a little bit better than I was hoping. Not sure how I'll color it. Yet. And I kind of live out in the middle of nowhere right now, nowhere USA. Not completely rural. There's a decent-sized town nearby, but big cities are kind of a drive right now. And sometimes I'll go drive into the city to watch a movie, because especially if I'm going to a 3D movie, the screens are going to be better. You go to the 3D movies here, they tend they don't really calibrate their equipment very well, or very often, like they really should. Like, when I went to go see the Croods, I went and was afraid I was going to regret it, but I went ahead and saw it in 3D here. And one side of the screen, it's not... You have the two planes to make give the, the illusion of third-dimensional depth. And the two planes aren't weren't aligned properly. I'm not doing these glove marks like I should. Don't have time to see how they do it exactly. Jelly bean body. So there's like a double image on one of the screens. And also, do you, do you know how when you've ever used, you see this more on older laptops, but if you've ever used a laptop and you're viewing it from a weird angle, then the lights start to look dark and the darks start to look light and it's just kind of weird. It kind of got that effect on one side of the screen. Not really bad, but when there would be bright enough light in a scene, you'd notice it. But it's not as bad as some of the other times I've gone. I went to go see Brave in 3D here. It was the second time I saw it. And I think I need to bring his other foot in closer. And you know what? I'm going to do it the other way around. We'll put his foot out further. I went to see Brave here the second time in 3D. And the screen was really dark. I know a lot of people are get upset because the screen's usually darker for 3D movies when you put those glasses on. And they're really supposed to turn up the brightness on it so that you can see it despite the glasses. That doesn't mean the, stu the um, movie theater always does that like they, like they should. But that's how it's supposed to be done. But it was just really dark when I saw it here. His foot down. Get a rough idea of what I'm doing. And the sound was, like, turned way down, too. Shh! Everybody be quiet so we can hear the movie. And when you're at the theater, it's one thing when they turn the previews up really high and burst your eardrums when they play the THX sound. But when you can't hear it at all, then you've got a problem. But it wasn't like that when I went that this time. You know, I could actually hear the movie for once. And it's a good thing, too, because the audience was really loud. There were a lot of people there when I went to go see it. Which is good for DreamWorks, I guess. They like it when people see their movies because then they actually make money. But the audience seemed to get a kick out of it. It's DreamWorks, and DreamWorks does comedy pretty good. And it was a really funny movie. Some people will disagree. How people are. They all find the same things funny. 
You can hear in the background one of the cats is scratching on the door, wanting in. And I'll let him in later. But the audience found it really funny. I thought it was really funny, too. And I don't mind a noisy audience, as long as they're into the movie and not talking on their cell phones. You know, I don't even know what this button is supposed to be, so I'm just going to leave it button -y shaped. Except for one point in the movie, like a lady in the back was talking to the screen. It's a really weird movie to talk to the screen. It's not a don't-go-in-there kind of movie. I don't even remember what she was saying to the characters on the screen, but whatever. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good, although one thing that Disney and Pixar do really well that DreamWorks just doesn't quite is when they want to go into the emotional moments. And now they can do emotional and other things, so they mix them together. They can have emotional and funny. Um, Madagascar 2 did that really well. They can have emotional exciting. As long as they mi mix the emotional moment with something else, it works for them. But when they just go and have an emotional moment, you just have an emotional scene, they just don't get it as well, and I'm not sure... You would think it would be better. This is Chris Stan Sanders was one of the directors on this. Granted, there's two different directors, and it's been through several directors of, during the whole time they were working on it. Not the best thing I've ever done. But it's just not the best. When they, they decide to just sit down and have an emotional scene, just emotional, they don't do it very well. Just kind of comes out as talking heads. Oh, you know what? I After saying don't forget the tail, I forgot the tail. And the Croods kind of has that same problem. They There's a point in the movie... And they'd had a lot of emotional, kind of heartwarming, sad moments up to then. But there's one point in the movie where they want to just sit down and talk about something. Two of the characters, the dad and one of the other, the boyfriend character, are kind of having an, a talk. And if they'd done more than just talk, it would have worked. But they're just kind of talking at one point. It didn't work to me. It's just... Let's get on with the movie now. This isn't working. So, now, not all DreamWorks pictures have that problem. Prince of Egypt, which is one of the really early ones, didn't have that problem. Of course, that was more of a Disney-esque almost. And How to Train Your Dragon didn't. How to Train Your Dragon did the emotional moments very well. Crude's not quite as much. Another studio that kind of... Don't know if I really needed the knee marks there. His legs are different sizes. Another studio that can do emotional moments pretty well is um, Blue Sky. They're most famous for um, Ice Age. The two I er, two, the four Ice Age movies. I like the first one. The uh, sequels, not so much. They also did some other stuff. They did robots, and I'm kind of weird. I really liked robots. I guess other people didn't so much. Turn off this. Let's go ahead and do some coloring. Now, I said before, I don't use the eyedropper tool very much for doing coloring, but what I usually do is I usually just sit there and like this, and I'll go through it. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the wand, I'll use all layers, contiguous, and make sure my lines are mostly closed here. One thing I miss from, and I've got a really old version of Photoshop. I've got Photoshop CS, not CS6, not CX, CS4. I've got just CS, the very first one they came out with. And one of the things I miss, and the Macromedia, of course now Macromedia is owned by Adobe, and it's Adobe Flash. And one thing Flash has, but that Photoshop didn't, at least not, maybe they have it now, like I was saying, is when you went to the wand, their version of the wand, oops, you could tell it to close gaps. Where it wouldn't, it wouldn't close gaps, but if there was a gap like this, a little tiny gap here, it would see that there was a gap there, and it would act like it was closed. And you could even kind of tweak how big a gap you want to let things through. You know what? I put that mark there for his knee. You're not going to see that in a minute. 
when I fill everything in. So, let's get the body parts with the Mond. And since my lines are anti-aliased, I want to expand the selected areas just a bit. I'm going to go up two pixels to make sure that you don't get a... what I'm going to do this without doing that. See this weird little line where the two alias lines, or anti-aliased I should say, lines or get this weird outline. To avoid that I go select, modify, expand, and I expand by two pixels. And since I work really big, this works, and then you don't get that. And I just put that on the longer layer. It's supposed to go in the color. I guess I could, the darkness there, I could put on the inking layer, but I'm not going to. I like to have the field black areas where I can go back and mess with them. His nose still bothers me. You know what? I'm going to go redo his nose real quick. I'm going to make it stick out a little more. Some of the... Some of the official art has it more like this. I'm going to do... I do not know if that was better or worse, but I'm going with it. I don't have time. I'm running out of time now. Gotta hurry this up up here. I want to show you how I ink. Ink already inked. Not very well either. But I want to show you how I do some color. See so yeah, how we're doing. 26 minutes. We're gonna have to wrap this up really quick. Quick shading, quick shading. Okay. Use pants. You'll notice I use hue, saturation, brightness for my colors. What am I doing? I've got 17 gigabytes. Gonna have to kick this into overdrive. One thing I don't like about this is that the perfect red is always way over here. You can always just put it in the edge. I don't necessarily want the perfect red. I want to move it off. So I just kind of put up with it. I want to be able to get it just a little off without knowing exactly how far off here I can get. But since it's right there, it makes it hard to do. And Mickey Mouse, I'm going to saturate it quite a bit. And I got his glove as part of that. Oops. Go erase this. Get his other glove. Is this closed? Yes, it is. Select modify. Expand. Two pixels. And I'm going to cheat and just go perfect white. Don't usually like to use perfect white for things. You want to save your brightest colors for when you really need them. Just a few points. You don't want to have a lot of brightness. It's too dark. Or you don't want to have perfect blackness necessarily. Although something like Mickey Mouse like this, it didn't really matter so much. Because he's got that really saturated look anyway. But this is how I'm doing it. I'm just going to still. Still this for his mouth. Expand. And I just put it on the inking layer. Shame on me. You know what, for that I'm just going to fill it up by hand. How are you guys doing on yours? You doing any better than mine? I hope so. I could make this so much better if I wasn't talking over it. In theory. I say that now, it's probably not true. At least he looks like Mickey Mouse, mostly. What color is his tail? His tail's black, right? What if I expand? And then he's got the yellowish shoes. Select. Select. Modify. Expand. Two pixels. Select. Modify. Expand. And the buttons are white. Well, you know. You know. Thanks. Select. Modify. Expand. I'm trying to get the 
Usually when you're going for a skin color, you want a little bit of orange. Back to when I was in kindergarten, one of my teachers back then. Oops, I got this on the inking there. Look at that. Said if you don't have a flesh colored pencil or crayon, just take an orange crayon, just make it light. He said this, if you want a uh, light peach skin color. Going for a darker skin, ugh, skin color, that's not going to be much good. No. I don't have time to shade, unfortunately. I'm running out of room on the hard drive. So we're just going to have to end it here. And he looks mostly like Mickey Mouse, sort of. And if you're working along with me, go ahead. Sign your name. Ta-da! And I like to date mine. Today is the 29th of March. You don't have to date yours if you don't like to. There you have it. A really rough Mickey Mouse. I'm not really happy with how it turned out, but ugh, what are you going to do? Well, I hope you enjoyed it, even despite how well, horribly it turned out. Hope you enjoyed this Let's Draw, and hope you'll enjoy it next time I do it. Join me again. Hopefully I'll have a little bit more on Dead on Junks, and I can show you a little bit more. And until then, have a great week. Dale out.